Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Signed by Superstars Live Virtual, this time with the devil himself, the Taskmaster, Kevin Sullivan. Thanks for being here today. No, thank you, Robbie. I really appreciate it. And you've always been a, 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 a positive thing in the wrestling business. And I saw the tape of your oh, this huge success. And you did it two times in a row. Yeah. Right? One in the afternoon, one at night. One in the afternoon and one at night time at the I arena. I saw that crowd. You must have had 4,000 people outside. It was, huh? it was packed. It yeah. was literally. I've been to ECW in the heyday, and I think Friday's show, was the line was longer. I don't know how it's possible. Well, <laughs> it's possible because you did a great job. And the other thing is, I think... They couldn't have, you couldn't have picked a better spot to do it at WrestleMania. Of weekend. course. Yeah. You did a great job. Thank you. And yeah. that building is historic, so I think a lot of people wanted yeah. to come to see the original ECW guys that could actually still go in the ring and yeah. go. And, and don't you think because the building's kind of cleaned up and it's not it's the same? No, it's not the same and it's larger. But it's, it's great that the people still remember ECW, and I think you got a hell of a plug from Paul on Friday night. Right? Oh, yeah, Paul, he definitely yeah. plugged it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. so that was great. It's a good stuff. Yeah. Guys, if you want to order anything to be signed by uh, Kevin Sullivan, the website you're on right now, there's a picture of Kevin and drop-down menu. Just click on it, do a drop-down. There's, uh, I believe there's 10 different 8x10s. We have a 1 11 by 14 and we have two 11 by 17s and uh, we got a lot of other stuff for you guys to order as well on the website. So we're gonna start with some mail order, and if you guys have any questions at all for uh, Kevin, just put it in the chat, and we'll ask him away. All right. Hey, what's up, Glenn? What's up, Hoshi? What's up, Steve? What's up, uh, Gilbert and Brian? All right, this is gonna be uh, for Justin Liber. We're gonna do red paint pen, uh, which is right there. Right yep. yep. And they're all primed, right, Joe? And we're gonna write the Taskmaster, and we're gonna sign your name. Thank you, Justin. Pull that off. Yep. Okay. Awesome. Taskmaster? Yep. Okay. And then we'll sign your name underneath that. Good question, Devon or Devin. I will ask that. Somebody wants to know, uh, in Ring of Honor in 2016, what was the plan for you and BJ Whitmer and uh, Punishment Martinez? Funny story. I told Punishment the second time I met him, right, that he'd be main event the WrestleMania inside of five years. I think I was pretty close. That's good. That guy has worked his ass off. He deserves everything he gets. And for our fans out there that saw his match, the ladder match, yeah, watch real closely because he's dictating that match to everybody, and he's so smart. The time the ladder was the shits, right. he got rid of it. Nobody else thought of that, you know. They could have got hurt, or, but he's he. And then when he was in, was he in the Royal Rumble? Or what was the one before he was in? The Rumble, probably, right, Mike? The pay per view, yeah. He was dictating the whole match there too. He, the guy is just amazing. You know, he was over three hundred pounds at one time. I remember that. You do? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I remember, I seen pictures of him yeah. when he was heavy. Yeah. So he's. I know Triple H is really high on him too. Like. So you still follow the product, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I thought this WrestleMania, the booking was the greatest booking I've ever seen. It was so good. Yeah, it was so good. Uh, it, it brought that story to life, but at the end, he got, Cody got to finish the story. He, they set up matches with him and Rock the third match with him and Roman, Roman and The Rock. They got uh, Lewis, Lewis ready to do something. Yep. They got Lewis, they got Seth, they got Punk, and they got McIntyre. You can mix that whole thing it's up. It's insane, right? yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I heard that Steiner's kids moved up, Yes, right? yes, he's a, my God, I watched him live on Saturday. Saturday. He's a machine. Yeah, and now, they mentioned that Brock is back in the fold. Yep, yep. They, what a pool of talent they have to choose from. And my thought is, and I gotta ask you, is this better talent right now than the Attitude Era? I think so. I These guys too. are athletes and they could go. Yeah. Yeah. And not only that, 
but the storytelling. It's like Mike and I, Mike took me here, as you know, we were talking about AEW. Right. They have fabulous matches. It's all the same. But my thing is, do you think because Tony was a tape trader, when you used to get tapes, you saw the best matches. You didn't see any storylines. Right. And his thing is, he wants to have five-star matches. Well, The Rock and Cody, didn't they almost go an hour of conversation? Like, yeah, yeah. At Raw, yeah, the other yeah, night. It was yeah. like 40 minutes. Yeah, and they did this, really, until The Rock bloody Cody up with two slaps. Yep. That's all. Less is more. Yeah. Yep. yep. Yeah. It's crazy, too, because you just think about all the stuff that's going on right now in WWE, and um, oh, I'm losing my train of thought. I know I was going somewhere with this. Shit. I forgot what I was going to say. So that's I, I, okay. I, oh, I was talking about uh, Drew and, and all the other guys. It kind of reminds me of Mid-South when Bill Watts was booking. You had all the heels. and Everybody was working each other. There was no real heels and faces. I mean, there are in WWE right now, but yeah. like everybody could work anybody right now. It's, it's, it's a good product. Yeah, like you said, I watched... Uh, the Cody uh, Roman match. Roman's not a complete heel. There were people cheering for him. 100%. Too. And when you get that, and I also think that Cody will end up being a heel maybe sooner than we think. I said that today when we we're going to lunch. I said yeah. he's going to turn heel one day and he's going to yeah. be awesome at it. Yeah. 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 I mean, they set it up to me, you know, the crybaby thing. Right. And you know, we've all been indoctrinated into the people demanded that. If you look at the signs, those signs are the same signs printed up. I'm sure they're giving it to the people. Yeah. But he had the crybabies. Cody cried a lot in the interviews. Yep. He had his mother there, his father-in-law, his wife. His he brother. <laughs> yeah, he cried about Dusty. Right. I mean, they, they, they're set for a long time. Now you had a huge feud, obviously in Florida, with his dad, um, Dusty. What do you what do you think of Cody as a babyface? You think he's a uh, chip off the old shoulder of his dad? I I don't think I'm not. This isn't belittling Cody at all, but I don't think anybody can be Dusty Rhodes. Right. It was a different time and a different era. And here's something: I wrestled him almost every night in some capacity, whether it was me against him. Me and Mark and Roop against the Wyndhams, me and Blackjack, Barry, and him, Dusty and a six man, me being on the floor with Mark. I never heard anybody in three years yell out, Dusty, you're fat. He was one of them. Yeah. And I think Cody is doing sort of the same thing. He's got the people behind him and stuff. But he dresses too good to be. Yeah, yeah he, he, to, he to me. Right. Didn't he look like a guy in the circus that opens the show yes. with that flashy Ringmaster. thing? Ringmaster. And then the tattoo on the neck. Yeah. It just, it's going to be easy for him to turn him. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I believe in it. So, um, oh, Brian Westcott, we have your encyclopedia, and we also have Stacy Cruz's encyclopedia. Um, Mike, if you just want to hand which one, it doesn't matter which what one. What color first. do you want? Um, let's see. They don't have a color preference. We'll probably do a Sharpie. Maybe blue. Okay. I could talk to you about uh, wrestling all night long. <laughs> yeah. Guys, I didn't miss anybody's questions. I'll go back and, and I'll take a look at the chat. You know Brian Westcott? Tell him I said hello. All right. Andrew Anderson said hello to you, Brian Westcott. You probably met him at Color Flower Alley. Yeah, loads of times. Yep. Memories of being on uh, Baywatch, somebody asked. <laughs> I, I can sum it up this way. My wife said to me, she's, that was with Pamela Anderson, right? Right. My wife said, she's all fake. I said, I don't give a shit if they put it together with plaster of Paris. I want to find the guy that did. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. All right, Lucas Glover, we have the Justin thing. What did uh, Lucas Glover send in? It says Black Sharpie. Might be a card upstairs. There might be a card on uh, Piper or uh, the dog's thing. Who is it? Uh, Lucas Glover. I think it should be a card. All right. Vinnie Vincent, photo number 10. Let's see what that one is. 
Photo number 10 is this one right here with Kamala. Oh, yeah. We're just going to sign that one. We can do a, actually, let's do a yellow on that one, yellow paint pen. That way it will come out a little yeah. bit better. Thank you, Vinnie Vincent. Guys, if you want to place an order, you may do so right now on our website that you're currently on. Great deal on the autographs, only 20 bucks each. Inscriptions, an extra 10, I believe. All right, that's for Vinnie Vincent. Thank you, Vinnie. Thank you, Vin. All right, up next, we have Chris Witte, 8x10 photo number one. We can do this one maybe in red. Sure. Yep, and then he wants you to write the Taskmaster on it and then sign your name. Let's see. <laughs> we just had um, Tari Runnels here, and believe it or not, I don't know if you've ever seen this one before, but we're selling this for 500 bucks. <laughs> now you can say you played with Terry's boobs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we gave it to a Japanese guy, to Jerry, and he was popping huge for it. All right. <laughs> She's probably going to call me later. And, Why are you letting everybody touch my boobs? <laughs> Joe Brabham, photo number nine. This is you and Sting. What do yep. you think about Sting? What are your thoughts on him retiring? Well, we'll do this in white paint pen. I got to give Tony Khan a lot of credit. From what I heard, Sting wanted to do the job, right? Right. Because that's the kind of guy he is. Pass I the mean, torch. I was there from the very beginning of Sting, he worked very hard. He was never a problem. He was great in the dress room and he retired on his own philosophy. Yeah. You know, and uh, Tony made the right call by him going out on top. 100%, I yeah. agree. Yeah. Yep. There's nothing up there. Oh, there's nothing up there? Oh, I wonder what he got. What do you want on this? Uh, this one is the Taskmaster. Let me see. Lucas Glover, what did you send in for um, Kevin to sign? Just curious. Uh, it's $10 extra, Glenn. All right. I don't think I wrote on there. Did I? No sticker on that? Nope. Chris Whitty. All right, awesome. Joe Brabham, photo number nine. We just did that one. Oh, no, I gave you Chris Woody already. This is for Joe Brabham. There you go. Joe Brabham. All right. Matt Zadell, let's see what you got. We'll do this one in red paint pen. And then um, we're going to write to Matthew and then anything else you want to write with your signature. So do you watch all the current product? Do you watch like uh, Raw and all that too? Uh, I'll, yeah, like when this bloodline thing started and I think it's the greatest angle in the history of the business. Yeah. They captured me. I couldn't not miss an right. idea, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know Paulie's all over that too. Oh. It's got his fingerprints all yeah, over it. Yeah, absolutely. It's yeah. stamped, yeah. And I think The Rock had influence in it and I think Roman had influence on it. And not only that, what I liked about their whole matches, it was completely different. It was like old school. It was. <laughs> it was like violent. Yep. And <clears throat> I don't care about the five stars. I want to go home and say, oh, I want to see those guys get their ass kicked. And yeah. they did the right thing because they drew it out and drew it out and drew it. And I go back, some of the most entertaining things they did wasn't just the heat. That thing with Sami Zayn made him. I was just going to say that. Oh, yeah. Sami, I was popping. They, and when they did the thing, he's <laughs> he's not feeling very oozy today. They were crying. They right. were biting. They were all turning away from him. Yes. He, it was great. Uh, so we're going to write Tasman. to Matthew and yeah. then anything you want to write with your signature. <laughs> He's got that shit-eating grin on his face right now. 
Hassan, uh, I'll have Joe answer that question. I, that's Joe would know that. Okay, it says, to Matthew, good luck in your fly fishing. <laughs> there you go, Matt. Thank you. Hopefully he fishes. Sign your name. Oh. You've got to sign your name on this. And that one too, right? Uh, yep, we've got to sign so. his name okay. too. Yep. Mark Pearson said, hello, Kevin. I met you at the gathering last year in Charlotte. What are your thoughts on the match with Kamala in wing when you worked for Victor Kionez? It was uh, the strangest thing. You know, that's the one that we brought him to Smoky Mountain. Yeah. And he said he was going to get blood on his arm. Right. Well, when I went to... Oh, Kenny hit, Moore. Yeah, Kenny yeah, Moore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody asked about, I think you worked maybe Kamala one time. I oh, don't know. In, oh, over in Japan. Oh, I, I, yeah, it was a one-time deal with me and him. Kenny Moore thing was amazing. But he was so good. I mean, he played a role that you couldn't do today. Right. He did it well. Very believable. And his stuff was solid. And it took a Mack truck to take him off his feet. He was really, really good. Anytime I was around him, whether I managed him or wrestled him, he was one of the top big men I've ever seen. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. It was believable, too, yeah. even though I, you know, I was a little kid and I was scared of Kamala at yeah. different shows that I would go to. Um, Kane Pierce, photo number 10. We'll sign this in red as well. And uh, he wants you to write two Kane with a K, K-A-N-E, the Taskmaster, Kevin Sullivan. Somebody wants to know if you're ever going to write a book. Yeah, someday. <laughs> what would the title be? It's over now. It's over now. <laughs> you get a little, oh, hey, you can hawk some of my ashes, Rob. Oh, yeah, we can, we can sell it. We'll auction it off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Kane Pierce. Thank you, sir. All right, Brad Aldridge. Photo number six, I believe, which is with you and Jackie and Jimmy Hart. Yeah. And maybe we'll sign this in yellow. And we're just going to sign your name. Oh, yep, there it is. Thank you, Brad. Thank you, Brad. Awesome. There you go, Brad. Thank you. That's somebody just dropping something off out front. And then photo number four is you and Nancy. Is you're to get? No. We're, um, we're just going to sign your name on this one. What color? Um, yellow? Let's do yellow on your robe. Somebody said, Kevin, I love the fact that you're so into today's product. That is amazing. Well, I mean, I'm a Russell fan. We all are, right? Exactly. Everybody That's... in this room is a Russell yep. fan. Yep. I always mark out, and I say the day that I stop marking out is the day that I'm out of the business. Yeah. So, um, who came up with the name Dungeon of Doom? I think I did. I might have. Or Dusty did. One of the two. Oh, you recently you just did a vignette with uh, Carrying Cross yeah. and Scarlet. Yeah. And I don't know if they ever aired it on TV. I know it was on YouTube. Was yeah. there plans for you to come into the company at all? No, but... I. Uh... Kerry and I are good friends, and he asked me to do it, and he came up with the idea, you know, where I'm a priest, you know, right. and then I exposed I loved it. that me and him, he's my son, right? I loved and it. And then I got into him and Scarlett. Right. What I was trying to kind of do, and not being disrespectful, who was the evil one? It was like Adam and Eve and the snake. Yeah. Who's the snake? Me, Kerry, or her? And end up being her. Oh, that's yeah, yeah. yeah. See, I, I think that would have been great for you to go in, but and just do TVs. Was there anybody in the office say, "Hey, maybe see if he wants to come in," or, or was it just a? Oh, it was for carrying, but uh, I think he mentioned my name a couple of times, and they they did a little short thing on that vignette we did and put it in overlaid one of his vignettes right they put, so if they said hey kev you want to come in and do work a really late schedule just tvs and stuff would you want to do that or uh... absolutely i mean i i think that carrying cross for somehow has got mixed up in a bad situation or he's i thought when he was in nxt 
with the shaved head. That shaved head makes him look. And he could cut a promo, by the way. Yeah. He was great in his state. When he had the head shaved, and she came out with him, they were the best looking couple on the TV ever. Okay? Ching Ching. Yep. Yeah. I thought they were going to be the next Randy and Liz. Yeah. But when Vince gave him that goofy helmet. Hated it. Oh, I hated it. And that has to be, and I don't care what people say. When they gave Dusty the polka dots, right? And put, Jeff Buck Kegs or Jeff Buchanan. Just, get, just click it? Yeah. Okay. Oops. Yeah, that's okay. I'll, I'll send you the voicemail? Here, yeah. go ahead. Okay. I don't know what I did with your phone. That's okay. I'll okay. Just, so, uh, Carrion could be up there. And that, it was actually Triple H. He was calling to hire you. Okay. No, go ahead. When he had to put him with those guys, and no disrespect for the other two gentlemen, but Carrion needs to be off by himself. 100%. And if they could give him a shove, we didn't even mention L.A. Knight, right? Yeah. And Logan, right. Paul. It was amazing. Yeah. If you got Carrion, this would be the ultimate roster of all times. And I think for him to do this, to maybe get into it, you got to erase what's happened to him, right? Yeah. He gets a start, then they put the helmet on, start, off, start, off. What if he had a voice that could talk to him? Almost sort of like a Wyatt thing. Right. Where the voice told him he has to do the reverse of the 12 labors of Hercules. He has to sacrifice. If she uh -huh. cut his hair... If she became a dominant thing f to him, and then she was a, at first she's against it. I don't want you to get hurt. But then as this goes on, she starts to make it shit a lot harder for him. I love it. Yeah, and uh, that would make I think give him a boost. And we've seen what interviews can do and what vignettes can do with them. And I thought the camera work on WrestleMania was incredible. The best produced show of all time. Yeah. Incredible. If you did something like that, he'd blow by a lot of people because, as you know, he's got one of the best bodies in wrestling today. Yep. It isn't over-the-top muscular, but he looks like an athlete. I just think the head-shaved thing would help him out. He looked like a natural bond killer, yeah, right? I actually, 100%. I like his hair shaved. Yeah, yeah. Yep. It's, to it's very true. Joe Mast said, uh, how did you like booking WCW? Oh, I, I, I really liked it, but there was some problems. Was like, you know, they right. don't work for me, brother. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that can stop your day. When you give guys creative control, then that's like the, uh, the boys running the asylum, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. Eight by ten for Joe Mast. It's you and Sting. I guess we'll do this in white paint pen. Well, actually, hold on. Joe Mast, once it's in red, I'm sorry. Okay. And we're going to write NWA Hall of Fame 2014. NWA Hall of Fame 2014. Let me go back in this chat and see what other comments there are. Yep, Paul Henry, you're in. We got your order. Ben, good question. Tim Moody says hello. <laughs> hey, Timmy. Andrew said hello too. Awesome. There you go, Joe Mast. You can sh I'll show the picture. There you go, Joe. Thank you very much. Somebody asked, um, what was the idea behind the devil managing college wrestlers as the varsity club? Okay. During that time, do you remember the scandals that were going on with the college athletes? Yeah. Drugs, raping, pillaging. Yep. Okay. This was Dusty's idea. You get the three super athletes that are college kids. What is that guy with the black robe doing? I got some more too. You know, I mean, it was just, we were playing. This was, a, like I said, Dusty's idea. We were playing into what was happening around the country at the time. And it was working. To me, these guys didn't get a chance to go f further. It's because we couldn't keep Steiner heel. 
He was so over. Yeah, he was so <laughs> over. So true. I, I and then he started doing Alex. He was the automatic baby face. Yeah, I got to tell you a story about that. The first time I wrestled him when we turned the baby face was in the old Boston Guards. Right. So I said, Rick, and we had Marvel and Hagler sitting on the front row, wow. right? Wow. And I said to Rick, I think you should go out first and get the people up. I said, do you bark and stuff? So he goes out and he starts barking. The building explodes. But I had Buzz, the announcer. Right. And the announcer said, and here he comes down from down the aisle from the new NBA world champions, the Detroit Pistons. The whole building turns that spoon. I come down right behind him and he says, and here he comes the hometown boy from the greatest franchise in the history of the NBA, the Boston Celtics. Right. They pop. I get in the ring, smoke's coming off his ears. So I said, maybe I'll fox myself. He grabs me, whips me in, and clothesline me. I look like Linda Blair. Mm -hmm. My head spun around about nine times. I went out of the ring, and I, as I pulled myself up, I pulled myself up where Hagler is. I said, hey, brother, I need a hand. He looked at me and said, you're on your own tonight. Wow. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah. Robbie was great. He's still great. Yep. He's amazing. His yeah. son is just, he's oh. going to be a, such a star. Yep. Love this stuff. This is when you were doing the devil gimmick yep. down in Florida. When I was tape trading, I got all that stuff. I made sure of it, and it still holds up to this day. Um, maybe we'll sign this in yellow. Sure. We're just going to sign your name. It's for Don Shanks from Canada. Hey, Don. I think you got another one as well. Photo number nine. It's you and Sting. We'll do this in a white paint pen. We'll just yep. sign your name. Somebody said, uh, Joe Bernard's, in the thousands of after magazines that I own, one of the Tommy Rich and Buzz Sawyer, incredibly bloody on the cover with Kevin Sullivan. It says, Satan is my manager, is the best ever. What backlash did you ever get from doing oh, the devil gimmick? That... I never used the word devil. Right. I used to use a Buddha Dean who actually is a fertility god in the Hindu religion. Right. I got that when I went to Asia. I actually got it in Ipo, Malaysia in a cave temple. And uh, I met a Sifu and I was on a journey. So uh, did I get any heat? No, until that magazine came out. And I never okayed it. Wow. And. That got me heat in the Carolinas. That really got me heat. Because uh, I'm not sure who it was. Maybe it was Pat Robinson. He came out and knocked it real bad in the newspaper. So that knocked the wind out of my sails. Yeah. No. Oh. Somebody said, I remember in 1983 when my aunt turned me on to pro wrestling. I remember watching the promo with you and Purple Haze. It scared the shit out of an 11 year old boy. <laughs> What was your favorite vignette that you did with uh, Purple Haze and, and Nancy and all those guys down? That was the uh, one of the first vignettes they did in Florida that wasn't wrestling orientated. You know, that was the beach scene and the moon. Right. And Curtis narrating it, oh. Mark coming out of the water. I think that was the best one I ever had. I remember people remember like, this. Yep, yeah. I remember like I can watch WWE. I can't remember shit from like <laughs> like two years ago. I remember everything from the eighties because it just meant more. Yeah. So we did a, the other thing was we did that one take and we didn't know there was going to be a full moon that night. It's perfect. Yeah. And I remember when you shaved uh, Nancy and Luna's hair. Yeah. In the apartment. Yeah. That was just amazing TV. Yeah. Uh, Luna. Oof. Throwing ink and dusty sister in yeah. the studio with Gordon Sully. Um, photo number seven with one man gang. How'd you like working with uh, George? I love working with George. <laughs> He's the best, right? Yeah. He, uh, what color? Uh, we're gonna do purple paint pen on this one. We'll do this one right here. I'll take the cap off for jo you. George is a, a sweetheart. He really is. Yep. He's totally different from his gimmick. Yeah. <laughs> Which Kevin Sullivan or um, or both? Let's see. Just your name, Kevin Sullivan. That's what right here. Awesome. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you, Glenn. Whose idea was to pair David Sullivan with you? Uh, that was Mike Graham's idea. He was booking at the time. I was just coming in from Japan uh, 
on a nightly, and then we did this thing with Dave. They came up with it, and the Nasty Boys had something to do with it, believe it or not. Right. And uh, they got me going with him. And uh, you want me to tell you what got him fired? Sure, definitely want to know. No one will admit this, but I know it for a fact. I overheard it. One of the guys that was very close to Hulk said, people are confused that he looks too much like you. Wow. That was it? Yep. It's crazy. Yeah. That's and crazy. I think that happened to Dan Spivey, too, up in New York. Yeah. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. This one, uh, we're just going to sign the Taskmaster and your name. This is for Paul Henry. And purple. we'll do it in... Oh, we can do it in purple. That's fine. It'll come out good. Yeah, definitely. Somebody would like to know Don Shanks. What are your thoughts on Ray Stevens? He was... Oh, we could do it the other way around. Shawn Michaels was the Ray Stevens of his era. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, I had the good fortune when I went to San Francisco... We lucky enough to follow Patterson and Ray that I did this thing with Roop and to get me over they brought in Ray to be my partner and I said to him uh, Mr. Stevens how, how do you want me to sell and give you the tag he said nah this is your town kid I'll give you the tag and then when I wrestled him a couple of times I was mesmerized by him. He was that good. Everything that Flair does, practically, he took from Ray. Right. Again, this is for you, Paul Henry. Thank you. There you go. All right. And the sad thing, Rob, there isn't much tape on, Pat on, on, on Patterson and Stevens together, and there's very little tape of uh, Ray in his prime. Yeah, he was awesome back in yeah. the day. I only I only know him when I started watching him was WWF and yeah. with uh, Albano and and the Snooker feud, the good old days. Yeah. Yeah. Tim Minkle, photo number nine, which is going to be you and Sting. He wants it in white paint pen, and we're just going to sign your name. Yeah. What are your memories of Buzz Sawyer? I had easier street fights. <laughs> right. Thank God he was my partner. Sometimes uh, one time. I think that was the only time I was over close to getting knocked out. He went to give me a tag. Yeah. And he missed my hand and hit me in the head, and oh. I was rocking in my pants. What's the real, I mean, as far as you heard, we heard a lot of different things. He owed people money. What, what do you think has happened with him in the end? You know, Dark Shot of the I, Ring talk? I think he was hot shotted. Yeah, a lot of people say that. Here's what happened. In Atlanta, when we were all there together, even if you weren't living in Atlanta, you had an apartment at uh, 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 the Falcons Rest, which was 98% wrestlers, right? Yep. And I had just gotten there, and I came out going to my car one night, and the car pulled up. And it said, the guy said to me, hey, where's Buzz Sawyer? I said, I don't know. He said, you tell Buzz Sawyer that I'm he I was here, and I'm coming back until he confronts me so I found out later that Buzz had taken him for some cash and some other product right and from what I heard he was doing that every place he went and then he went to California up a, opened up a wrestling school and he did it to somebody who was not the right guy to do with you know right and his brother kind of told me the same story before he passed I think he worked Undertaker too for uh, three grand yeah yeah. yeah, and Terry Allen for ten. Yeah, I heard about the Magnum. Didn't Magnum go up to Portland? Yeah, uh, or was it Portland? Yeah, no one's and he found him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. crazy. And then, so Buzz didn't want to fight him, I guess, because he got him a job in Portland. Right. Yeah. Unbelievable. Uh, That's insane. Going back in the '80s, a lot of you guys out there are probably watching this. Remember uh, Kevin's matches on TV when he would wrestle enhancement talent. A lot of the matches for me, I loved watching because it seemed like you were shooting on them and, and killing them. Um, any of the talent ever complain when you were in the ring with them, or did you always take care of them? I, I took care of them, uh, but they knew what we were getting into. I mean... <laughs> Anybody see your name on the lineup sheet and be like, eh, I don't think I want to work Kevin tonight. <laughs> no, no, maybe, maybe so, but uh, I had to do that because, first of all, I'm wrestling Blackjack Mulligan, 6'10". Right. I'm wrestling Dusty, 6'3", Barry, 6'6". 
if I took it easy on them, it would have killed the mystique. Yes. You know, so I had to be the ultimate evil. So, I mean, I never hurt anybody intentionally. Did I lay it in? Yeah. Oh, yeah. But not anything that was going to cripple them or break their teeth and their nose. You know, I knew where to place it. Yeah. All right. All right. Ian Thorpe. Uh, Mike, the last piece that I gave you, was that for Tim Minkle? I just want to make sure I'm checking these boxes off. Okay, so now we got one for Ian Thorpe. We're gonna do this one in white paint pen. Thank you, Ian. What does Ian want? Uh, just your, uh, no, actually the Taskmaster and your signature. White, right? Yep. When you were breaking into the business, somebody asked, who was helping you the most? Uh, Bobby Shane. Bobby Shane? Yeah. Uh, Bobby was very good to me. Uh, he he really helped me. He watched all my matches when I was the drizzle and shits. Uh, We're having another one with him. We're just going to sign your name on this one. We can uh, do it in white paint pen. I don't know where. Maybe on Jimmy Hart. It's yeah. purple. He, he, and Bobby really, was really close to, to me at that time. I mean, and he was, you know, on top. I was just starting. And he was very nice. But the other thing is, I lucked out going to Florida. So I kind of felt Mike and his father were having a problem. So at that time, I became like a surrogate son. And Eddie would tell me the problems he's having with Mike. Mike would tell him the problems he's <laughs> having with Dad. So, yeah. You it, think? Go ahead. No, I was going to ask you, do you think that uh, Mike Graham's father was the greatest Booker finish guy of all time, Eddie Graham? Or Pat Patterson? Eddie Graham and my between the two, Eddie Graham, because Pat learned from Eddie also, right? But what I saw Saturday or Sunday, yeah, I think the mantle's been passed. Oh yeah, yeah. And Paul learned from all those guys that yeah. learned from you because he was in yeah. Florida, and yeah. it's crazy. So, oh, uh, somebody asked Kevin, what are your memories of the Tower of Doom triple cage match at the Great American Bash '88? That was not designed to be like that where they put everybody into the thing it was supposed to be me and Jimmy and Precious at the bottom right and I was supposed to get to the bottom but when I dropped down I was supposed to hurt my ankle and leg and I was supposed to be crawling after like a monster movie right and then she was going to pick up the crutch and whip me and then uh, beat me up so bad that when Jimmy dropped down he was going to put me in his Hold, and I was going to tap out. Ah, that would have been cool. Somebody says, uh, do you follow the current NWA at all with um, Billy's, Billy's company? I, I followed it a little until that debacle they had with, I've seen enough of that shit right. in real life, you know what I mean? And I didn't understand where they were going with this. It's probably above my pay grade, but I don't, think that if a cop was watching that program <laughs> he pulled the reverend over right 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 he ain't gonna let him go without checking that car <laughs> <You know? laughs> thoughts on the freebirds michael hayes and uh terry it, it was a great combination because terry was one of the greatest workers of all times without a doubt buddy was a workhorse and michael gave it that flavor he could talk and Michael ended up being a very good worker. He threw one of the greatest punches in the business. Yes. He had that real snap left hand. Right. I fired Joe Gomez, who's a personal friend of mine, because he didn't sell it the first time Michael hit him. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said, uh, was there ever talks about Kevin being the higher power, Matt Jackson? What What are you uh, referring to the higher power in which uh, which company? We might have just talked about that with uh, Karrion Cross. What's up, Jordan? Again, guys, if you're just joining us, we have lots of different 8x10s for you to choose from. We have 10. They're all on the website. We also have two different 11x14s. We have an 11x17, and we got some other cool stuff. Let's have Kevin sign the uh, barbed wire um, ECW thing and some flags now, Mike. Uh, somebody would like to know, would you ever want to go to AEW and maybe help Tony Khan book, or is that pretty much something that can't be saved right now? I, I think anything can be saved, but... 
Tony has a lot of smart people in his company. But I think they're all yes men at this point. Do you think so? Yeah. Yeah. I think they're just there for the money, and or they tell him, and he just doesn't listen to them. So we were talking about that in the car. Oh, yeah, okay. I kind of think it's uh, both. Yeah, I think guys are just secure with their job, and they yeah. don't want to rock the ship. And I also think that when you say it a couple of times on ideas, and they say, "Oh, that's good," well. Let me think about it, and it never comes to pass. You stop asking. Yeah, stop asking. Right. You know you're intruding on someone's exactly ideas. Yeah. yeah. All right, we're going to sign some flags. We're okay, just waiting great. for some more orders to come in. If you guys have any other questions, please list them in the chat. We will definitely ask. There's one I saw about carrying cross. Um, I think it was up here. Kevin, thoughts on this idea I created for carrying cross? What if cross has an alter ego? Cross's alter ego needs to be a killer cross, like the fiend. Carrying Cross and his alter ego, Killer Cross. The cross that is missing for four to five years, hit, hot, hid in the dark closet. Is that a good idea? Yeah. I, the, so, sort of what we talked about, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. It's very similar. Great, great uh, idea. Uh, you know, you could do so much with that. The Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. Yeah. We're, we're uh, carrying his talk, and then all of a sudden, superimposed very lightly. Is kill a cross, you know what I mean? I like that. Yeah, they could do a lot of... Very, very good idea. Oh, yeah, Vince was the higher power. Yeah, in in 1998, during his feud with The Undertaker, um, there was talks of possibly it could have been you as Under the Hood being... Yeah. Uh, but it was, you know, Vince yeah. all along. So I understand what you're saying here. Let's see. What's that? Kevin, do you think Mike Graham would have kicked Sid's ass the night of the squeegee incident? With one hand. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We just talked about One Man Gang in WCW. What are your memories of One Man Gang in WCW? I think he should have got a bigger push than they did. Yeah. I mean, he, here's a guy. Is George close to 400? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. He could do anything that looked excellent without hurting you. Yeah. You and know? he was a monster, too, in yeah. Mid-South and yeah. UWF. And yeah. They kind of, like, just put him in as one of the guys. Yeah. There's another one. We've talked about ribs. When they make him Kareem. Right. Yeah. That had to be a rib. Yeah. And he made it work, though. He got over yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that gimmick would not work today. Oh, good question. Yeah. Somebody wants to know what you think about the whole Vince McMahon scandal that's going on now. Well, in this country, you're supposed to be innocent and prove till proven guilty. 100%. But it is so bizarre. You know, the feces on the girl's head in a three-way... <laughs> is nothing? Did nothing splatter on Johnny? Right. I mean, do, do they have rolls of toilet paper? Uh, you know, let me get that for you. Right. Uh, I just—it's just so bizarre. What I can't wait. It's a shitty situation. It really is. But what I can't wait is the movie. When, aren't they making a Vince McMahon movie? Yeah, the biopic. But I, I don't know if it's put on the back burner now. Yeah, I'm sure it is. But yeah. This would be a very right, what a scene. spice spice it up. Huh? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Which part of it does, does that fit in? I don't even know. <laughs> it fits the first in. Hour? It fits in when they're. It fits in there when they're in the restaurant, and Vince is eating six brand muffins, and Johnny says, "I don't think that's a good idea." <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, we'll, we'll have him sign these in silver, yeah. I guess. Okay, well, we're gonna have him sign these in silver. Black's fine. Black. We have no silver. Okay, yeah, black on the white. Just that's good. Black. All right. Oh, good question, James Pritchard. What are your favorite uh, spots to get barbecue while on the road? Or uh, what is your favorite spot on the road to eat? Sabatino's down in uh, Baltimore? Uh, yeah, and uh, Ruth Chris is the one in Chicago. They have a lobster that's like 15 pounds. And then if you're talking about barbecue, there was a little place in Kansas City, uh, Kansas, that I used to go to. But then in Tampa, there was a restaurant that had the best barbecue in the world. It was called Pop's Barbecue. Right. All the guys went there after TV. Very good question there, Jordan. Um, well, actually, somebody else. Yeah, Joe Bernard's had a good question as well. Okay. Um, what was the most frustrating thing that you had to deal with as an executive in WCW? Was it the guys who had creative control, like Kogan, with this contract? Or was it all the politics backstage with the, uh, the click? Well, NWO. You know, it was funny. I got along with the the National Hall in six very well. I never had any problems with them. Maybe a few skirmishes, but no problems. Right. It was when 
you go and you listen to guys' angles that are very good, and you squeeze them in the show, and then you start the show, excuse me, like they did WrestleMania, hot. Right. Build up the show like you do music up and down, and then you spent from Tuesday to Friday, and then Saturday you get the day off, and then you go to this town on Sunday to go back over it, and then Monday at 4 o'clock they say, this doesn't work for me, brother. Mm. It's kind of tough. Mm. When you say brother, you know who that is. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's see what other questions are in here. Um, was Kevin ever approached to come to WWE after WCW closed? Well, the funny thing was I had just signed a three-year contract uh, a month before. Uh, who was the guy that was Eric's boss that, that sold the company? To Shaw? Vince? Yeah. No, not Shaw. Oh, um... You know who I'm talking about. Yes. His, I, his niece worked there, had yeah. an affair with, yeah. with a Hull. Yeah. Uh, I, I heard you talk about it. I just forgot the name. Yeah. Be careful when you sign these. This is a uh, real barbed wire. Oof. We don't want you to gig. Okay. <laughs> Where do you want me to sign? Um, oh, with white? Yeah, we can do uh, silver or white. Oh, no. What do you want? What you got? It? Oh, he's got, a, he's got a nice little marker here. Okay. Uh, check upstairs. All right, let me just go back. You have one? All right, guys, we still are taking orders. We'll take orders for maybe like the next 15 minutes. And we're going to have Kevin sign a lot of the stock pictures that we still have here. You guys want to watch us do that? That's cool. Maybe we'll ask him some questions. Yeah. While he's They've, signing. There's been some great questions. I don't know, Alex, if he knows who he is, the uh, NXT champion, uh, Dragunov. I don't know if you if you follow it that closely. He just got uh, recu recruited to Raw. Well... For a little bit. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, I, that's the only thing that I really don't have time to watch. Same here. I don't watch NXT yeah. as much as I should. Yeah. I'm just joking. <laughs> I, I, it's, it's, it's a really good product, and I, I think a lot of the guys uh, this past Monday are now going to, like, like Braun, he's, he's up there now. Yeah. yeah. And it's a great idea. It's just like uh, having a triple A team. Exactly. And you can pull, you, know, you know, in baseball, yeah. you can pull a guy up, yep. send him back down. Yep. You can fill a spot. Yep. I mean, the thing they did with Braun, when he, uh, and this was a tremendous rub, I thought. When Brock didn't make it, they right. put him in Brock's spot, and yes. he did an excellent job. We were just talking about, too, the, uh, was a mania, Austin spot in Undertaker, right? Undertaker? That, yeah. That's, that probably yeah. Was, would have been uh, Brock's spot. Yeah. Yep. Somebody also asked if you ever had any interaction with Ted Turner. Yeah, the only, I mean, you know, he would come down to talk to the guys with Jane Fonda and stuff. Right. But back when I first got to Turner, uh, we had our first pay-per-view. Well, maybe it wasn't the first, but an early pay-per-view. And Ted had a penthouse upstairs. Right. And uh, who's the guy that owns owned the Kansas City Chiefs at one time? Mike, you would know that. I don't watch anything except wrestling. <laughs> uh, I, I think football's a work. They they <laughs> did the thing with the uh, silver. They got in trouble by hoarding the silver and driving the prices up. I well, I anyway, his his daughter, I, you know, we were on the 13th floor, right? Right. So I pressed the button to go down, and I see the elevator coming from the top penthouse right and it comes to my floor opens up and it's Ted and he's in there half in the bag and he's groping the girl and he goes to me Kevin we're gonna wrestle I said yeah Ted he said uh, when are we gonna have a pay-per-view I said we had one last week he said how do we do I said I think we made a million bucks for you he said good kid let me know next time I said sure Ted I will wow yeah. that's a crazy great guy great guy wow Somebody said Lamar uh, Hunt. Lamar Hunt. There great, you go. Great. Thank you, Ian. I will ask that question, Matt, in one second. We got to ask about the best of all time. Uh, did you ever get to work with Roddy Piper or a single oh, yeah. match? Yeah. What are your thoughts of uh, Roddy? One of the best talkers in the business? If not the greatest, right there, close to it. I mean, the best. The th 
I think Roddy was cheated of never getting a run with the belt. Yeah. He, he didn't need it. But what he accomplished in the wrestling business, he should have been given a run. 100%. Yeah. He was the best. Yeah. He made Hogan, I think, in my opinion. He also made WWF. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. In 84, 85. He could, uh, he could make a guy. And you know something? I've gone back and watched some of Roddy's matches. I appreciate them now more than I did then. Right. He didn't have a whole array of uh, offensive moves. But he knew how to sell. And he his shit looked solid. The oh. punches and what you said about him selling. Yeah. People don't understand what a great seller he was. He was the best. Without <laughs> being a chicken shit. Yes. Uh, and yes. he wasn't a giant. What do you think about MJF? One of the most talented guys I've ever seen being this young. I just hope... Young Roddy Piper, maybe, a little bit? Yeah. I mean, his, he, he's going to get there someday soon. I mean, he's made leaps and bounds. I just hope that somehow, you know, you heard the thing that Cody gave him a shout. Oh, of right? course. He'll be up there soon. Yeah. 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 So I just hope that they don't... He's the kid's smart enough to protect himself. One hundred percent, he is. Yeah. He's very smart. Yeah, very smart. I ho just hope that somewhere down the line, they don't take this personally that he goes up there. Because I hate to see them dump shit on him before he goes. Right. And he's gonna go. Oh, one hundred percent, he's gonna yeah. go. Yeah, and I hope so. That way, Hunter doesn't have to. And he can do it easily, but he doesn't have to spend time wiping that shit off. Yes, I agree with you. I'm still trying. I don't know if you're in the room, but uh, Lucas Glover, I'm just still trying to figure out what you sent in to get signed. Let's see if I can figure this out. I, can't. I, don't, I don't remember. All right. Did I give you the sticker yet for Richard Samuels or no? No. Okay. That's the next photo we're doing. We're going to sign this in white paint pen, and we're going to write the Taskmaster, Kevin Sullivan. Ah, there you are, Lucas. A card. It might not have made it in time. I don't think it did, Luke. We definitely didn't get it. What are your memories of working with Gary Hart and uh, Mark Lewin? Oh, Gary was one of the greatest managers of all times. Because he didn't do anything until he needed to do it. Like, he would almost bore you to death. Like, he came into a territory. Right. His guy would get over and over and over. And a guy gets thrown out of the ring by Mark, throws the guy out of the ring. Gary just walked up, but he'd be five feet away. He'd l l lull you to death. And then the sixth week, he'd take that sock out that had the cue ball in it. Right. And just whip them to death. I mean, <laughs> he, he was, uh, they made a great team, him and Mark. Yes. All right, this is for you, uh, Bob Tackett. Getting Kevin on your ECW canvas. We're we gonna get him on the little one too. Yeah, All right, cool. I'm gonna have him start signing some of the eight by ten so we can yeah. save time, and then um, we'll just I don't know, Joe, if you want to help us pull them. Ooh, good idea. Good. Uh, that's actually a great question too. Thoughts on Bray Wyatt? And don't to me, I always whenever I saw Bray, I always said this. He belonged with you in Florida in the eighties. Yeah. He was like he came. He should have been in the. He's an eighties guy in my opinion. Yeah, I think that too. There's. He was there when he was a baby. He saw some of the stuff. I think he, we really, not only did we lose a very, very talented wrestler, we lost a guy that would have fit in right now oh. with them and the brain trust there. 100%. I mean, if, if I saw where Undertaker said that he should have been the guy that broke the streak. Right. Coming from the Undertaker, that's a big, big compliment. Oh, 100%. Yeah. I wonder how his brother's going to do filling his shoes now because he's got a big burden on his back because they're going to give him that, you know, that big push. This is just my opinion. I'm going to ask you yours. And Mike's, 
Do you think that that's a heavy load to carry? 100%. Especially because it was your brother? Yes. Mm -hmm. I feel bad for Bo, to be I, honest. I, I do, too. I just think that Bo is a talented guy. And to drop that on him, I don't care if he shoots down a satellite with fire from his mouth, they're always going to say, well... Compare him. Yeah, they're always That's... going to compare. It's going to be very difficult. Have you watched the documentary at all? They yeah. Out? Okay, yeah. 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 So I, I was thinking the same thing when I was watching the documentary, especially at the end. I was like, oh. Yeah, and especially when he was talking about that, that was his idol, the thing. And rightfully so, but that's a i wish them so much luck on that because the their fam, his family played a very instrumental Oof. role in my life with blackjack and barry and mike i just am afraid and that's it that's the best i can say von eric afraid like the von eric type of thing where no i'm af okay. i'm afraid that he's going to be saddled yeah the, the, pressure. the pressure yeah I agree. Oh, wrong one. Good question, Mike Sharp. Really good question. We'll ask that next. <laughs> James Pritchard's a pretty funny guy. Um, somebody had a really good question on the original Sheik, Ed Farhat, yeah. Sabu's uh, uncle. Yep. What are your memories of uh, the Sheik, the original Sheik? I got to wrestle the original Sheik uh, when they took over the Sheik's territory from Atlanta. Right. I went up there the first time. I was one of the first guys to go up in the Sheik's territory, and I wrestled the This Sheik. is Detroit? Yeah. Okay. Actually, it was in West Virginia. It was in uh, Charleston. Okay. And I wrestled him there. We hadn't taken the territory over yet completely, right. and I, I wrestled him there. Then uh, he brought me up to Canada and gave me an incredible deal. Me oh, and Lou Mark. White. Sorry, White Paint Pen. Yep. And he, I'm, I'm gonna listen to you. He wants you to write to Rob Dungeon of Doom and then sign okay. your name. Thank you, Rob Quinez. You were saying he brought you up. Yeah, to Canada. Me and Mark. We Mark, I think, had the first match that Sabu had, and I had one of the early ones too. Wow. You knew he was gonna be great, and uh, then later on, before I wrestled him in a single in. ECW, when we were having the Great American Bash, right? I begged Dusty to put him on in Detroit, and Dusty said, "Nah, it's not going to draw." I said, "I guarantee you, we'll do a hundred grand." I bet Dusty five hundred bucks. <laughs> the match was me and uh, me and Murdoch against Dusty and the Sheik. During the match, we had a double turn. I turned on. Um, Murdoch and the Sheik turned on Dusty. Right. We did over a hundred grand. It was the biggest house they ever drew. And then no something. Return? No, because they didn't give him his money. Oh, typical. To, okay, to rob what? what um, to rob Dungeon of Doom. That's crazy. Did you see the uh the movie The Iron Claw with the Bunarks? Did you watch it? I watched some of it. Yeah. Yeah. What I did, did you think of it? it? Even though the uh, history of the the match is all backwards. Yeah, I I. Oh, sorry. No, it's good. It's already the sticker's already on there. Okay, I thought it was uh, as well done as it could be, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it wasn't a earth-shattering one. Yeah. But, I mean, that's a strange, <laughs> it's a strange story, real uh, life story. Yeah. Yeah. This is for Chris Janke. Um, we're gonna write: Stay in the light, away from the dark side. Okay. Stay in the light, uh, uh, away from the dark side. On this white. Um, any color you want. We can do white, I guess. No, she's uh, Thank you, Chris. Somebody asked uh, earlier about Brian Pillman and the uh, the promo with uh, Thank You Booker Man. Yeah. What are your memories of uh, Brian? I'm sure you've talked about this yeah. a zillion times. I think that's another one. Well, that looks good. Not only, not only did we lose a great performer, Brian was a genius. And I always said, if Brian had lived and had been healthy, oh, uh, if Brian had lived and been healthy, 
we talk about great feuds, right? Yeah. We wouldn't be talking about any feud above the Austin Pillman feud. That's underneath, so. Oh, we, we lost that one. We lost Pillman as a brain. Right now, he would have fit in perfectly. Oh, my God, him, without huh? a doubt. Yeah. 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 We'll see what happens with his son, but his son is no senior. He's, no. Yeah, he's definitely not. Um, no, not to Brian Pillman Jr. I'm no. just saying that. He's a great kid. I've used him on shows yeah. and stuff like that, too. Um, let's see. Memories of uh, Bruiser Brody. Did you ever get to work with... Uh... Oh, lots. Yeah. I work with Bruiser probably uh, 60 to 80 times. Out of that, 10 times I was the baby face. Right. You That's know, crazy, he too. He coming to Florida because... Were you there that night with Lex and him in the cage? I, I had already... become the booker that night, but I was coming in from Pensacola, so I didn't see that. That was booked before I got there. But, I mean, I, I've watched that match, and it was Brody just being frustrated and didn't want to right, with take the green it kid. out. Yeah, he didn't want to take it out on him. Yeah, and I think Lex was saying he was also going to uh, Crockett. He was leaving the company, too, I think, Yeah, right after that. Yeah. So, just didn't, uh, it's crazy. Uh, good question. Did you ever work for Vern in AWA? No. No? No. Okay. Shouldn't, I'm going to just shut mine off. It's. Actually, it's Missy Hyatt. <laughs> She's texting me. All right. Should an active wrestler be on the roster be the booker? Do you think it's good for the... Uh, I could answer that. That's that's a no. Don't you agree? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Today's day and age. Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. Guys, if you want to place an order, we're going to let the orders go for another five minutes, and then we're going to shut it down, and we're going to have Kevin sign the rest of these photos. Um, we got a bunch of stuff to get signed. Again, if you want to place an order, now is the time to do so. we got another five minutes live with Kevin. Um, somebody said, Kevin, I wanted to ask you this. I'm training jiu-jitsu to be a wrestler, and I'm pitching this idea, and I want your thoughts. The Wolf Project, similar to the White Rabbit, but my version and creation. I will put QR codes of Full Moons, a dark tale of a Little Red Riding Hood, etc. How would you book this? This will help me pitching the idea for future. Cheers. No disrespect. It's already been done before. Be, yeah. be new. It's been done because of the wire thing is too close. Yes. And then if Bo does it. Exactly. You're going, you're going to look like go, a copycat. You're going to be a knockoff. It's better that you got the uh, judo. Maybe you can come up with something with that and maybe be dark. But I, I think that you're some things, you know, they don't make Mona Lisa's anymore. Yeah, exactly. Or, yeah, maybe you could, uh, Judicious is all about respect. Maybe yeah. you cross a line a lot yeah. and you don't respect the uh, the boundaries and you cheat to win, even though it's supposed to be about honor. I don't know. Best Gordon Sully story. <laughs> that, that doesn't involve know, uh, drinking. I know no, this one's I'm going to, I'm going to. I'll just tell it. The, just tell it. The statues of limitations are up. There was a girl she was very wealthy and she wrote for the Miami Herald <laughs> and the no the Tampa Tribune and after TV she had an insatiable appetite and she, Gordon was her target huh. so I told Gordon she was going to interview him she went in there I shut the door the next thing is I hear panting and screaming and Gordon coming out <laughs> and saying I've done it again I still got the looks I thought oh god I'm not gonna break his heart but Gordon was a everybody you know we all have a different era that we say this is the best I think Gordon did wrestling better than anybody now Jim is right up there with him. But Gordon, and J Jim's changed his style a little when he was in Bill Watts. Right, I was going to say. But, Bill. but Gordon sold everything straight. And when I was doing my crazy shit, I loved it. He would keep that Mr. Sullivan stuff. And I would never get close to touch him, I never threatened him. And we had this kind of, and he did it with everybody. It wasn't just me. He knew how to push a guy, and he knew how to make a guy. And 
it was because he respected the business. Right. Yeah. I would compare him up there with Lance, but I think he was better than Lance. Lance Russell. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was around Lance. I used to go into Memphis. I had a thing with Lala there for a while. Uh, it's just that Gordon had a little bit more believability in the spot, but he had a different uh, wrestling company. Florida, they say, was built on wrestling. It was built on blood and guts, but they hit it with the wrestling. Yeah. Favorite territory, you worked them all. Georgia, NWA. I had the Florida. Be best run I ever had was probably San Francisco. Right. Yeah. So San Francisco and Florida are my favorite too. But for a place to live and work was Hawaii. That oh, yeah. was great. That's easy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Home at night trips. Yeah. yeah. All right. Guys, any other orders coming in? I just saw something go through, Joe. What's that? Okay. Oops, let me just clip this back on. I remember your angle in Georgia with, uh, I think it was Austin, Austin Idol. Idol. Yep. yep, the uh, the flat tire angle. Yep. That was with the Freebirds. Yep, that was great stuff. Yep. Who said anything about four flat tires? Yeah. I, I forgot what the line was, but it was it was so awesome. All right, Matt Jackson, photo number one. <laughs> we'll do this in yellow paint pen. And he wants you to write two Jackson on the top left, and then here, Taskmaster and your name. Taskmaster top right. Taskmaster yep. top right. Yeah, I pointed to it, Joe. Right here? Yep. Kevin Sullivan and Taskmaster, yep. right? Yep, yep. No other items, Don Shanks, except the photos. And guys, nobody's ordered this yet, I'm shocked. We have these 11 by 17s. We're gonna have Kevin sign these when, they, when we go off the air, but this is a great shot. Hand me that other one. Mike, check out this one as well. This is a great 11 by 17 too. Whoa. Yeah, and nobody's ordered this yet. This is good stuff. Dungeon of Doom. Oh no, that's not the dungeon. That's uh, that's the R in there. That's the uh, ultimate uh, final solution or something that we got heat about. It was too close. Somebody said you look great for 74. Yeah, thanks. All right. Why did you ever go to WWE or WWF back in the day? Did they ever approach you at all about coming in? Yeah, when I, uh, they, you know, I told you I, I signed the contract for three years, plus I was an employee. That's right. And uh, they called me when I started the gym. And I met with uh, Johnny and Stephanie right. in Fort Lauderdale. I drove up from the Keys. And it, start, it was a very good conversation, but it started, we'll bring you up for TV on Monday and uh, t Tuesday, and you'll get home Wednesday afternoon or Wednesday night. After that, it was, you'll get home Friday night, but you had to be back on pay-per-view. I don't know if they Sundays said probably. Uh, Sunday or if it was Saturday night. And I just had put a, over a million dollars into that gym. I had the biggest gym in the history of the Keys. Right. And uh, I just said, paid uh, over $300,000 cash for the weights and equipment because if you took out payments, right. it was 33% interest Oof. because no standalone gym makes it. And we made it wow. big, yeah. That so, is, that's amazing. Didn't know about those, gonna order one. All right, Robert Kionez. Guys, yeah, you, you can order them right now. We'll give you guys another five minutes to order those. Oh, we also have an 11 by 14 on the end of the table. Mike, can I see that one? No, it's right here. Oh, sorry. Yep. We also have this, nobody ordered one of these. Check this out. Awesome, awesome shot, guys. This is available on the website. So we'll stay up for another five minutes so you guys can order one of these too. All right, that's yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, they don't make guys like you anymore in the business. Like, you know, legends that still watch the business. A lot of the guys that we have here, they don't watch it anymore. Oh, yeah, they're like, I don't watch it anymore. And Kevin, you're like a genius. You're like, you know, you've you've had a huge rub on the Heyman. And uh, Paul learned a lot from you and, and Terry Funk. So I always like to be around guys like you to pick your brain. Because you guys see the future before it even happens. Because you know the business. <laughs> it's true. All right, Rob Kionez, I see your order coming in. He's got one of the big 11 by 17s, this one right here. And we'll do this in yellow paint pen. 
and we're gonna write Taskmaster Dungeon of Doom, and then we'll sign your name. Anybody watching AEW? Did they show you the, uh, the footage yet? No, let's not even care about AEW. Who trained you, by the way? Somebody asked that. Chris. I mean, we, we did like a couple of shoot interviews with uh, Kevin. You can watch them on rfvideo.com. You'll hear all about his beginnings. But uh, somebody did ask who, who trained you and I how were you discovered. I was never trained. Here's what happened. That's <clears> awesome. I used to I used to wrestle amateur, and I was wrestled for the Waltham Boys Club, the Cambridge YMCA, and the Boston YMCA Union, not YMCA. Right. It was the second oldest athletic club in the United States. The New York Athletic Club was older. And a guy came down when I was working out, and he said, and he was 40 years old, and I was like 19. And he said, uh, you want to train? So I started training, and we became friends. And this guy came from South Africa. His name was Peter Berry. Right. He was from the DeBerry family, the Diamond People. He had been in... Uh, soap operas. Oh, we graduated from Harvard Business School and Oxford University. Yeah. He uh, had been in movies. Uh, he was in, uh, uh, what's the one with Dustin Hoffman and John Voight? Uh, Cowboy. Midnight Cowboy. Okay. He was in Midnight Cowboy. He did a lot of uh, work on Broadway. He didn't want to be anything but a pro wrestler, but it was beneath his thing. Wow. But he used to go up in Montreal at the time. There was two territories. You remember that? Yep. Well, there was a third one on Sunday. His name was uh, Fred. No, Curry. I can't remember his first name. That's he was the biggest star in Europe at one time. Was it Fred Curry? No, that was Fred Curry. No, that was not. Oh. I'll remember. It. But anyway, both companies let anybody work for him, so I got to. Russell, and Let's see if I can go ahead. And uh, Pat Gerard, he will wrestle this curry something. In Let's Europe. see if I have that autograph. Yeah, I only have the Tim. No, yeah, Fred Curry. No. It's the only guy that I have this autograph right here. I know he's yeah. a. Mo I know I got. I think he's a Montreal guy. So, I wrestled this. They had. They were going to have me wrestle. Right. I knew wrestling was pre-arranged right and I kept on saying to him, when are they gonna tell me what to do right, right? And then Peter Berry said to the uh, referee when are you gonna tell him what he's doing he said I'll be back in a minute well this goes on first <laughs> match goes on I said Peter when are they gonna tell me right he said uh, let me find out he comes back he said oh they're gonna come tell you in a minute when I'm in the ring of my match I'm on second you're on third he had me go out after I don't know what's going on. I go out. First thing I know, I knew what a flying mare was, right? Right. So it was Fernand Fachette, who was a big star for the Rougeos, but he wore a mask there, right? So he could train guys, right. basically. So I fly him near him, and I freeze, and I, then I stomp on his head. <laughs> and the guy rolls out on the apron. Right. And he's trying to rearrange his mask and get his thoughts together. And you know the old bullshit we used to pull a guy in? Yes, come we, on. yes. Yeah. Well, I didn't know what to do, but I hit the ropes, and I came off those ropes uh -oh. about 30 miles an hour. I knocked him back into three rows. He got up, took off the mask, started swearing in French. I panicked. I jumped up on the second rope, and I'm yelling, come back, come back, please come back. So now I know... I gotta face this guy in the dressing room. I'm either gonna get my ass kicked or I gotta fight like hell. I go in and he said, what were you doing out there? I said, nobody told me what to do. He said, what? I said, nobody told me what to do. He said, have you been trained? I said, no. He, and he said to the referee, did you tell him for the finish? He said, no. He grabbed the referee and pushed him against the wall so I kinda ease back, right? He said, he could have hurt me real bad or I could have hurt him real bad. So he said, you're here next week, right? I said, yeah. He said, you come early and I'm going to start working out with you. So wow, that's I was lucky. That's crazy. That's yeah. a great story, too. Uh, All right, we're going to do two of these in yellow yeah. for uh, Ian Thorpe. We're just going to sign your name. 
A lot of talent there, huh? Yeah. Mean Gene, he was one of the best. He was awesome. Yeah. He liked the ladies, that's for sure. Oh, he sure did. <laughs> I loved him in the bars. Oh, my God. Oh. He was hilarious. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, he was great. And he was so good on the mic, huh? Yep. He was the best. Yeah. He was the best. Somebody said, Mike Mitchell drives an Iron Man match every day just to get to work. A true legend. I do. <laughs> Time to buy the shoot for the rest of Kevin's stories. Thank you, Chris. All right. Guys, I want to thank you guys for joining us tonight. Uh, I thought it was an amazing, probably one of our top signings of all time. We told a lot of great stories. This is almost like a signing in a mini shoot interview. So I want to thank uh, Kevin for making the trip up from the Sunshine State. I would not want to have left uh, Florida. I want to move down there eventually. <laughs> yeah. So, And uh, I want to thank you once again for joining us. And hopefully we'll definitely get to work together again. This has been like, I don't know, number 77 times yeah, we've worked yeah, together. Yeah. So... Again, thank you guys. And again, we're not going to be on tonight, or to, I'm sorry, tomorrow. We'll be back on Sunday at four o'clock for our next signing and uh, of us selling stuff. So, all right. Thank you guys. I'll see you guys all on Sunday just for sales, no signing.